In this video, we're comparing the room correction software and hardware system from SoundID by Sonoworks, Arc Studio from IK Multimedia, the MA1 system from Neumann, and Nova from Trinov. We're going to be discussing the quality of the room correction, the resulting listening area, the phase coherence, the EQ accuracy, the price, the features, the ease of use, the pros and cons of each, and a whole lot more. It could be a long video, so use the chapters at the bottom of the screen. But which correction is best, and more importantly, which one is right for you? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Ed Thorne. It's good to see you. Some of you may be wondering why you need room correction software if you have optimized your listening environment with acoustic treatment, and that's not a bad shout. It is vital to optimize your studio as much as you can before introducing room correction software. But for some of us, myself included, the reality is there is often only so much we can do and we need a little bit of extra help. Now, there are many guidelines we can follow to optimize our listening environments in terms of frequency response, reflections, decay times, modes, etc. But that's not a discussion for this video, otherwise it'll be longer than it's going to be. And also, this is not quite the full picture. The reality is, no room is perfect, and most of us are working in compromised spaces. Room correction software can do the heavy lifting for us in these cases, or if you're lucky enough to have a great sounding room already, it can perfect the space you're in for the following often overlooked reason. Room correction software addresses one of the fundamental issues of studio optimization, and that is phase coherence between your speakers. But why is phase coherence so important? Well, phase coherence, if executed correctly, results in all the top end details, the transients, the reverbs, the sibilances, the general top end airy information aligning properly between the speakers in the listening position and becoming clear in the audio. You wouldn't necessarily notice if it was slightly out, but when it's in place, it's a light bulb moment and all of a sudden clarity, depth, and space enter the mix. And when you AB them between on and off, it's really, really obvious. This can turn a murky smeared audio into a polished sound that will help you identify problems in the audio faster and ultimately enable you to mix and master faster. And more importantly, it will help your mixers and masters translate. And you're probably watching this video because you know how difficult that is. So with all these systems, no knowledge or understanding of acoustics is necessary. They all feature a step-by-step -step guided setup routine to make the process really easy. Some of these are better than others though, as we'll discuss. SoundID is the CPU-based measurement software from Sonoworks that either runs in the background of your entire system as a desktop application, or it can be used as an indoor plugin. The software, including their own branded measurement microphone, costs $299 or euros and comes with calibration profiles for over 500 models of headphones. Simply plug the microphone into your audio interface and the setup instructions will instruct you what to do next. Arc Studio is a standalone desktop processor from IK Multimedia, also priced $299 and euros, including an MEMS measurement microphone. This works as an in-series device between your audio interface and your speakers, performing the correction on the device itself, freeing up your computer's CPU power. The Neumann MA1 system comprises of a proprietary microphone paired with DSP Ethernet connected Neumann digital speakers. Now the models that facilitate this onboard MA1 processing include the KH750 subwoofers, the KH120 Mark IIs and the KH150s. Now the MA1 processing occurs on the speakers and the alignment profiles are stored on the speakers. This is facilitated by their additional built-in DSP, I should say. The 310 and 420 models of speakers, although hosting internal DSP for speaker performance, are not currently MA1 system enabled. I'm sure this will change at some point, but as it stands, you currently need one of the specific models I've just mentioned to run this software. Now, the beauty of the KH750 subwoofer is that A, it's a, a kick-ass subwoofer, and B, it can be paired with any analog speakers. Neumann top speakers are not required for this system if you have the subwoofer. The MA1 software provides an option to bypass the subwoofer whilst retaining the calibration for the speakers, which is how I've set it up for this comparison. I have the Neumann KH750 uh, and it's cal calibrating my PSI A23 monitors for this with the sub bypass. 
As a result of needing a Neumann speaker to operate the MA1 system, it is a more expensive option. In this case, the microphone and subwoofer combination costs about £1,500 or $2,000. But you get the added benefit of expanding your system with a good subwoofer. Or if you're in the market for new speakers, the 120 Mark IIs are a similar price and operate with the MA1 system. And finally, Trinov Nova is the designated rack-mounted room correction computer utilizing a 3D Pro microphone. Go the aliens! This is an expensive solution coming in at £3,995, including the microphone. Nova hosts six outputs and is supplied with one stereo license to facilitate using two of these. To activate the other two stereo outputs and the ex or the extra four outputs, a stereo license is required costing £900 each. So for my setup, because I needed the subwoofers on separate channels for maximum control, I needed an additional stereo license giving me four outputs, costing an additional £900. So with the four outputs, Trinov has cost me the best part of £5,000. And if you're thinking, that's insane, you're not wrong, but Trinov is the professional room correction used in all the top mixing and mastering studios around the world. And for very good reason, it is insanely good. But let's get into the details comparing the performances of these devices. Sound ID offers the most detailed instructions on how to set up the uh, the room correction. And it's actually quite a fun process uh, the first time you do it. Uh, you have to measure each speaker standing to the side of it, and then it will run you through how to take 37 measurement points around the listening environment. Now, this is quite excessive, uh, but how it does it is quite fun to begin with. It basically puts out kind of echo beacons that sound like a machine gun. It goes brr, brr out of each speaker, uh, kind of like sonar, to identify the location of the microphone. And it actually works really well, and you have to basically move the microphone on a stand uh, at the same height as your ears, facing between the speakers, which it talks you through all this, so you don't need to remember this. The system is very, very straightforward how to use this and set this up. And then you move the microphone, and it's very accurate uh, knowing where the microphone is, and it's actually quite good fun the first time you do it. But it'll take you about half an hour to do this the first time. I got it down to about 20 minutes, but it's still quite a time consuming uh, activity. But out of all these systems, Sound ID is the most easy to follow setup instructions. The Arc system is a little bit vaguer uh, in terms of its setup instructions. It, kind of, it seems like it kind of assumes you've already used Sonarworks and you know what you're supposed to be doing. For example, it doesn't tell you where to point the measurement microphone. Sound ID says always point it at the, the screen in between the speakers. So if it's there or there, you're always at an angle pointing in. Whereas at Arc, you don't know if you need to point it forward or at the screen. So I just did what Sound ID said and just point, pointed it towards the screen and it seemed to work fine. It's pretty easy to follow though and set this up. You can either do seven measurement points at one height or seven measurement points at three different heights resulting in 21 measurements and this will take you about 15 minutes. The Neumann MA1 system utilizes seven measurement points on three different levels, it takes about 10 minutes. Now, what I would say about the Neumann system is that it's very slow to compute and it's very slow to save the profiles. It's, it's kind of laborious, to be honest. I wish Neumann would speed this up, but it is what it is. But the key to this is this tiny little orange arrow on the screen in the software. If you miss this little arrow, you're not gonna be able to do any of the calibration. So heads up if you're using this. Trinov requires just one measurement point, although there is an option for measuring more points, but the one measurement point, it just delivers outstanding results. So that's really all you need. And this takes about two minutes. Now, some care is required to set up the microphone to, uh, to get the azimuth between the, the two speakers correctly because the microphone is measuring what angle your speakers are at. You're aiming for a 30 degree equilateral triangle and it'll tell you if you're out to within 0.1 of a, a degree, which is quite remarkable, but that's how it's calculating the phase response and the distance from the listening position and so on. But it's pretty straightforward and the microphone connects to the front of the Trinoff device via an ethernet cable. So Sound ID is possibly the easiest to set up, but it takes the longest amount of time. Trinov is the quickest, but you've got to be really accurate with how you're setting up the microphone. Uh, and ARC and MA1 systems, they're a similar time to set up. So let's talk about the resulting sound accuracy and the size of the listening area of each device. 
Sound ID, to its credit, EQ-wise, I think does a good job. It's a uniform frequency response and it handles null points and uh, well, and it lowers hotspots pretty well. I've used this system with many different speakers for years and it immediately helped my mixers translate better to other systems. Now, with the null points, it does some heavy lifting for you, but any more than about six decibels of EQ correction and it starts sounding unnatural and you can hear it. Even in linear phase mode, which uses a lot of CPU power, you can still hear something when there's too much correction being applied. It starts sounding a little bit digital. But in terms of the frequency response, I think this does a pretty good job. Where I think Sound ID falls flat is the phase coherence, because everything across the frequency range just sounds a little bit smeared. Now, if you're using budget-friendly speakers, you're probably not going to notice and it's going to do the heavy lifting fixing your room for you and it's i think it's going to help i would always recommend using this over not using it if you have to use some kind of room correction software in terms of the listening area i feel like it's delivering an area roughly the size of my head where everything sounds coherent if you start moving it the phase coherence really falls apart quite quickly and if you go out of the listening area like that it becomes quite obvious. Now, compared to the Arc system, the Arc Studio from IK Multimedia, the EQ response is a little bit strange for me. I don't think the microphone is capturing, measuring, or handling the low end particularly well. It's not necessarily that the EQ is wrong, but it's just not really giving any priority or, or delivering any weight in the low end. In terms of the top end, I've heard other YouTubers describe this system as very bright. I don't think that's quite the case. What they're hearing is an unbelievable execution of phase coherence. The upper mid range and the top end are so sharp and crisp and clear that, and the low end is, is lacking. It's appearing to be a very bright system. And this is largely by their own admission. IK Multimedia have delivered the option to uh, use a flat frequency response, which results in the details I've just given you, a lot of top end, not much low end, or a default setting where they've raised the low end by two decibels and lowered the top end by two decibels. And that delivers what is actually quite a good EQ response. But I feel like I trust sound ID from an EQ point of view a bit better. But the phase coherence, quite frankly, destroys sound ID. I think Arc does a much, much better job in this area. So in terms of accuracy, phase response, yes. EQ, it works, it does work well. And the listening area is a little bit bigger than Sound ID, but it's not quite as big as the other two we're about to discuss. The MA1 system is just remarkable. It works really well. The EQ is good and the phase response is good and the listening area broadens quite significantly compared to the previous two systems. If you want a consistent sound where your mixers will translate, the MA1 is a very good solution. And then we move on to Trinov, which... <sighs> The first time I heard Trinov, I hated it. I really didn't like how it sounded. It, it just didn't sound right. But I put a post on Instagram about this and I had professionals from huge studios around the world reaching out being like, bro, just give it a week and trust it. Mix on it and your mixes will translate. You won't even need to reference on other tracks. And they were right. Trinov has taken my PSI speakers, which are pretty expensive, and it's, it literally doubles the perceived value and the sound quality of the speakers. It's remarkable what it does. The EQ is just, it's spot on, it's perfect. The phase coherence is incredible. The time aligning is incredible. And what Trinov is also doing that I, Arc and Sound Idea don't think are doing, and MA1 might be doing, but I'm not sure, is basically fixing the phase flipping within the speakers. I didn't know this until I bought the uh, PSIs, but a speaker will flip its phase several times throughout the frequency response in proportion to how expensive the speaker is. The PSIs, I think, flip twice. Cheaper speakers will flip three or four times. Trinov corrects this, and that, as a result, makes the speaker deliver a better sound as it is. And then it's also time aligning everything and just creating the most perfect sound. You just have to take my word for it and kind of believe me, it, it is remarkable. Once you've heard it, you 
just can't on here. You can't go back to anything else. I've gone back to the, uh, well, through all these to test, and I'm giving you their merits as, as due. Uh, the MA1 system is good. I can definitely work with that, but Trinov is just on another level. And the listening area basically becomes the whole room in front of the speakers. You can move as far either side of the speakers, and you're just hearing the same thing. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> All right, for the next section, I want to dive into the software and outline all the pros and cons and the features that these softwares have, because some have more features uh, than others and some just have better displays than others. So let's dive in and check out Sound ID first. On screen now, we have the Sound ID software, and currently this is displaying the measurement I've taken in my room, the simulated after with the correction and the calibration curve. So if we look at the before curve, the purple line, we can see that there's a huge null at 100 hertz. That's just a curse of being in a square to rectangle shaped room. That's quite common, but yes, at nine decibels, that's pretty bad, I have to admit. I'm not in a position because it's not my room to do anything about it. As a mid-range uh, mode as well, and Sonarworks is compensating for that with six decibels of attenuation. The green line is the calibration, so it shows you what it's doing, and the simulated after the pink and purple lines there are the average of the result of the processing. We have a high pass filter. What this is doing, this means it is focusing the attenuation above wherever I set this filter. So it won't do any processing below say 200 Hertz, but I want it to do all the processing across the frequency band. So I'm gonna leave that off, but I know some people only wanna focus on certain target areas. There's a low pass filter for the same reason. I could set it to not touch anything above one kilohertz where it's relatively flat. You can also add EQ points if you want to correct the correction, as it were. Basically, I can add, I can take away, if I didn't want this mid-range boost to do too much, I could EQ that and I can play with the Q point and the width and obviously the gain and how much that is not fixing, not doing the correction. So we're kind of EQing the EQ. It's highly customizable. And for reasons I'll explain later, this is one of the best versions of this. In fact, it's the best version across all the software for this. Further on, we have translation checkers, and this is basically a selection of devices that Sound ID have measured and taken an average of to hear how your music will translate to different devices, such as three different car stereo setups, uh, systems, different headphones, AirPods, in-ears, laptop speakers, clearly a MacBook Pro, an average of different smartphone sounds, studio speakers, clearly NS10s or mix cubes, televisions, and other devices, including different curves that you might want to target your mixes to. What the translation checker is doing is basically applying an EQ to your EQ correction, which will give you an idea accurately of how your result, how your mixes are going to translate to those different devices. On top of the calibration profiles, we also have headphone calibration profiles where you can search up to 500 different headphone calibrations. For example, Order Z's, I can find all the Order Z headphones and find a calibration for my headphone model or Sennheiser. And including, do they have the new HD490s? Yes, they do. So we can load that. And that apparently is the correction for the HD490s. So what Sound ID is doing here is calibrating your headphones to match a curve closer to the Harman curve. Most headphones aren't close to it. Some manufacturers get close to it. Some don't. Some choose not to. Some prefer to be hyped and scooped and V-shaped and so on. This takes you relatively close to the Harman curve. So it's calibrating your headphones for you. What the native version of Sound ID reference doesn't do is gives you any cross-feed options, which is a bit of a shame. However, there is an additional bundle called Sound ID Studio, I think, where you can immerse yourself in a virtual studio environment, listen to different speakers in different positions, and also engage crossfeed. Uh, Sound ID did give me an NFR license for this, but for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to load, so I can't demo that in the video. Here we have Arc 4 Studio from IK Multimedia and immediately the user interface, the UI is a little bit more appealing and attractive. We can see the before and after curves and the target is the white line. As we can see, Arc Studio has measured a similar curve to Sound ID. There's the drastic mode at 100 hertz there, but it's not measured quite as much of a problem at 5 and 700 hertz here. This was about 6 decibels in Sound ID, so I'm slightly concerned by that but the proof is in the pudding and the correction of this does do a very good job. So this is the after curve. 
and you'll see it's a little bit squiggly, a bit wobbly, but it seems to be right from what I'm hearing. Now keep an eye on the white line because as I've said, that is the flat reading that it's given me and the flat reading most YouTubers are talking about sounds very toppy, sounds like there's loads of top end and not enough low end. If we go to the default custom curve that Arc think is correct, you can see there's about a 2 dB boost in the low end and a 1.5 2 dB drop in the top end. That does result in a more neutral, even sound. And you can see with the correction there how it's moving things away from the, uh, the correction line. We have a correction on off button here as well. This is also applicable from the device itself. Other target curves include different live rooms, virtual monitoring. We can assume the sound of different studio monitors uh, that they've sampled, different uh, mastering, mixing and mastering setups, and different hi-fi and multimedia things. So similar to the translation checks in Sound ID. Going into edit mode, and this is where we get some more flexible options. We have the high and low pass filters, which we can also apply down here. And we get these six EQ points. Now we can raise those and we can move those around, but we can't, as far as I could find, change the Q points, which I think is a bit of a fail because I don't want a curve that broad. If you know in the comments uh, what I've missed there, please feel free to let me know because I'd like to know for other people. However, you are limited to six with Sound ID. You can put in as many as you want and refine it as much as you want. There are no headphone calibrations with Arc, so what you see is what you get. In the Neumann software on the surface, there aren't really many options. We have our various setups and the different alignment tests. You can see all the different tests I've done with different speakers I've tested in the studios to calibrate them before I got Trinov. What we can do here is adjust the output level which I'm gonna leave at 95, and the base management. This is basically turning the subwoofer on or off remotely from the desktop, but it is it maintains the calibration on the speakers. You can't at this point turn the calibration on or off. You don't really need to though. The good thing is it calibrates everything across the entire system without any CPU power or any conflicting apps running in the background. So it's worth leaving on and you can have it with and without the subwoofer. We can edit the calibration but it's a bit of a faff. We have to go into this edit setting here, click edit, wait a painfully long time for this to load. I will speed this section up in the video, but trust me, this is minutes. What the Neumann software is displaying here is the alignment that the software has achieved. It's not showing us the before, so I can't gauge how accurately it's measured the room compared to the other softwares, which is a bit of a shame. I would like to see that. It's showing us what it has corrected and also the target curve that it is going for. So it is going for a hyped bottom end with a 2 dB boost in the system, which I'm guessing is to create a pleasing sound with the subwoofer, which it achieves very effectively. There are multiple target EQ points, not as many as Sound ID, but I feel like it's more flexible than Arc. And to be honest, if you need that many correction points of the correction, I think there's a bigger fundamental problem. Like I said, I don't use these because the software just sounds good. All right, moving into Trinov and this section may be expansive because there is so much to do. Immediately we have the optimizer on off switch there, blue for on. We have all sorts of networking uh, options to choose from, um, different clocking setups. Now Trinov unfortunately only goes up to 96 kilohertz. For a device this expensive, I'm surprised it doesn't go up to at least 192 if not even 384. I think that's something they should deliver given the price, um, but this is where we can choose between them. Preferred clock source and optical input mode, ADAT or a SPDIF. We have our input metering, output metering. These are the different speakers we have currently calibrated. They're not in position, which is a shame. I'd quite like to move the positions of these for my own OCD, but we can turn the calibration for individual speakers off, which is interesting solo mode and mute different speakers. Again, there's a headphone section. I'll be honest, I haven't paid much attention to that because I don't understand why there's a headphone amp on uh, the device. We can mute the whole system here and adjust the output. We've got various hardware setup options, various speaker output options. You can see I've got zero out of my four licenses available, but there are still two outputs, so I still have two licenses available to use. Different routings if we wanted to manually patch stuff differently. Everything's been set up for me, so I don't need to touch that. Once we've taken the measurement, we can further test our system and optimize it. For example, I can run pink noise out of any one of the individual speakers, mute them whilst uh, performing or solo them, change the levels of individual speakers, 
Now, I can only do this by whole decibels, which is a bit of a shame. The previous model of Trinov could do it to 0.1 decibel. It's strange to me they've gone backwards on this rather than forwards. And here we have a graphic EQ to manually tweak each speaker should we want to. This is one of many EQ options we have in the software. There's a bass management section. This is particularly fun and interesting, and I've spent ages calibrating this. So I've decided that in my room, I wanted an extra bit of low end, almost to match the Neumann system, to be fair, where Neumann was adding 2 dBs in the low end. I've added 3 dBs out of the subwoofers. And also, I've played around extensively with the crossover point so, and the crossover shelving system. Now, this is expert mode where you can do it for individual speakers. I don't want to do that. Come out of expert mode and we can set the crossover points for whatever we want, whatever number. I've tried everything you can think of, but settled on 68, which seemed to be the best crossover point with an octave of 12 decibels per octave slope. 48 got a little bit phasey. 12 decibels didn't quite feel right. 24 just sounded right to me. In the optimizer section, we can turn off or addition the time, the delay alignments, the acoustic correction, which is the EQ, and the level alignment, this, the output balance of each speaker. We can look at the target curves. Uh, we can adjust the extension curves here. What this is doing is boosting or attenuating the amount of correction at certain frequency points. Again, for example, because the PSIs are very upper mid-range forward, between about three and five kilohertz, if at the current correction Trinov has measured, it's a little bit bright and I dare say a little bit harsh. At least it was when the speakers were brand new. They may have played in a bit since. So I removed the attenuation for this little band here. If we look in the summary, we can see what Trinov has measured, which is the distance from the microphone to each speaker. The subwoofers are further down, so hence the extra distance. The elevation from the microphone, 5.79 degrees up, apparently from the left and the right, 6.56 uh, degrees up. That's probably due to the ever so slight different angles. I think when I was testing my speakers, stacking multiple speakers, I think I bent my desk. <laughs> and it's bowed in. That's why there's a slight difference from side to side. And the azimuth is the direction of the speakers facing you from the listening position. Ideally, this needs to be 30 degrees, but the fact that they're within 0.05 of, of a degree means that the microphone was perfectly positioned and the speakers are almost perfectly placed facing roughly 30 degrees towards me at the listening position. So this is what Trinov has measured for my room. As you can see, it's measured the dip at 100 hertz. This is zoomed out quite a bit to cope for the subwoofers going down to zero at these frequencies. You can see it's roughly got the dips right along the, the way. It's measuring a bit more of a, a null at 600, not so much at 5 and 700 as the others were calibrating, and not so much of a hot spot at 2 and 400. And this is a close-up of the correction, so you can see the subwoofers are pretty much flat from 70 down to about 30 hertz. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and then you're still getting minus 10 dB of information at 25 hertz, which is good. It's not coped with this dip, but there's a setting for that where I think I've selected a maximum amount of correction at about 10 decibels, I think. So that's why it's not overcompensated for that. I can easily fix that in one of the other settings. At the top, pretty much flat all the way to the top. And there's so many different settings we can look up. We can look at the phase. So the phase of each speaker. Uh, direct, phase, perceptive, impulse response, um, group delay. There's so many. I mean, I don't even know what these are, to be honest with you. There's so many things that we can check in the software. It's remarkable. So you'll see what these are. The, the, these points are the speaker's flipping phase as we go through the system. And the correction means that the phase has been shifted to optimize the system. That's the phase within the speaker's and what they're pointing out, that's not the time-aligned phase measurement at the listening area. So the calculations Trinov is making and the options it's giving us is immense. It's highly flexible, and I'll be honest, some of this I don't even understand myself, but all I know is that it works better than anything else I've heard. Once you've unheard it, you can't go back to mixing without it. The features are expansive, and in terms of results, it's just the best result out of all of them. Let's get back to the rest of the video. All right, some of these softwares come with additional features. I've got some general notes on them and we need to discuss Atmos. So Sound ID comes with uh, headphone calibration profiles, over 500 of them, which is remarkable. 
Now, I've tried a few of these. I haven't tried this extensively. I'm majority mix on speakers, and some of them have just sounded a bit odd. Um, the ones that did work were the HD 600s, but they're all relatively close to the Harman curve anyway. So what this software is doing is taking your natural headphone curve and basically trying to match it to Harman. Now, you can get the headphone calibration separately. There's a package for that that's $99 and euros, which I think is a bit expensive because the reality is you're only going to use one profile, but that's their pricing system. But you do get this included with the Sound ID system if you buy the full package. You can register Sound ID on up to three devices, which is good. Now, the important thing here is also that there's no separate subwoofer phase alignment with Sound ID. It's only a stereo output. So if you're running through a subwoofer, it will calibrate your room EQ wise with the subwoofer in mind because it will be measuring the frequencies, but it won't be able to time align the subwoofer with your speakers. So if your speakers, if your subwoofer is not perfectly in phase itself with the speakers, it's not going to correct that for you. Sound ID does utilize your computer's CPU, which I know is a concern for some people. The other systems are all off out the box systems freeing up CPU. And finally, Sound ID is Atmos enabled up to a 9.1.6 system. The software upgrade costs an additional $249 euros or pounds. But if you are going down the Atmos route, I suggest checking out the Aurea interface from Audience, which comes with Atmos enabled Sound ID for you to measure all of your speakers. Arc Studio comes with no additional features. It is not Atmos enabled. It can't do any separate subwoofer alignment because it's still a stereo output again, but you can register it with up to five devices, which is quite nice. Now, it's slightly a shame that the Arc is not bus powered. You do have to connect it to the mains, but there is a correction engagement button on the front, which is quite useful. The MA1 system independently processes the subwoofer in terms of EQ response and phase alignment which is really useful. So effectively giving you a coherent phase aligned three-way system if you run it with stereo speakers. The system operates on the subwoofers or the speakers DSP. So taking the processing off your computer, which is useful. Uh, the MA1 system is Atmos enabled up to 7.1.4 and that upgrade in software costs an additional $299 euros and pounds. Now with Trinov, if you buy the additional stereo licenses as, as I've had to do, you can align and phase correct your stereo subwoofers independently to your top speakers. And that's really where the power in Trinov is. It's external processing again, which is really useful. There's a headphone output on the box, which I don't really understand because I'm it doesn't calibrate the headphones. It's calibrating the speakers and I'm going to be listening to the speakers with that on. And if I wanted a headphone amplifier, I'd, if I'm buying Trinov, I'm going to be discerning enough to have a designated headphone amplifier. So I feel like there's probably a reason for that. Leave a comment if you can think of one, but there's probably a reason for that. But I just feel like it's a bit of a waste of time and therefore money. Nova is not Atmos enabled. Uh, I did ask if you could daisy chain two boxes together. Six plus six would give you the 12 needed for a 7.1.4 Atmos setup. You can't do this. However, Trinov do offer the Demon, which caters for Atmos and comes in at a cool ten thousand dollars and pounds there's still more to nova uh, the computer can be controlled by a desktop interface or mobile phone app which are free or the la remote which yes costs another 966 pounds now i've used the la remote and it's basically a nokia 3310 screen in a box it's pretty bad to be honest so i didn't bother buying it i've used it everyone who owns one complains about it and i don't need it as a monitor control because that's what my x16 does Trinov is networkable via Dante, which is good. Unlike its predecessors, Nova is very energy efficient and doesn't require cooling fans, and it runs completely silently. And also, the conversion is improved from, the, from its predecessor, the ST2. So if you're going on a room correction journey, I have some tips and suggestions for you. Have a tape measure to hand to be consistent with your placement with, the, with measuring uh, between all the devices. Use ear protection because especially using Sonarworks, if you're doing a sine wave sweep all the way across the frequency spectrum 37 times, provided you get it right first time, uh, that's a lot on your ears. Close all windows and doors. Um, basically create the exact same listening environment that you're going to be working on. Turn off any extractor fans and air conditioning units that might affect the, the background and the noise floor. Stand in the same place every time you do a measurement, move the microphone, put it in place, and go back and stand in the same place or sit in the same place, preferably 
behind the microphone and out of the way, so your physical body is not having an effect on these measurements. All right, so what's right for you and which one do I recommend? Well, it's not quite as straightforward as you'd think. First of all, I have to recommend Arc Studio over Sound ID. I think Sound ID has done well for many years because it's been the only product in that price point for a long time. Arc has come along, it's got the phase coherence right, and it's delivering a very good, clear sound. It's, got, it's not ideal in the low end, but I think for most people working on, say, medium to budget price speakers, when you've not got really low end anyway, coming out of a two-way speaker, for example, you're unlikely to have 30 hertz or lower than 40 hertz. Uh, I think it's a good system and you can tweak it, it's customizable. But if you want the headphone calibrations that come with Sound ID, that's also useful as well. Oh, by the way, links to all these products can be found in the description below. Purchasing these or any of your home studio gear through these links is a great way to support the channel if you found value in this extensive video. If you happen to be looking for a subwoofer whilst on this journey, the KH750 is a great option. Not only is it a really tight, punchy, well-extending subwoofer that will be a great addition to any two-way speaker system, making it a three-way, or three-way speaker system, making it a four-way, and it works really well with the MA1 system. You could get two of them. They do work in stereo pairs with each other. Or if you wanted to get the Neumann speakers as well, if you're thinking of a speaker upgrade, the Neumann digital speakers are a good option, and they, of course, both work with the MA1 system. Now, the MA1 system, I could use it. I've used it for a long time. Mixers do translate very well. Now, the best system, quite frankly, by miles, is Trinov. It's one of those things I can tell you till I'm blue in the face, and you'll be like, oh, whatever, of course he's saying that. It's an expensive system, blah, blah, blah. He's justifying his own purchase, confirmation bias, all that, whatever. You're just going to have to trust me if you haven't heard it. It is better than everything else out there. You get what you pay for. It is remarkable the results that it delivers. And it's remarkable how much detail you hear in your speakers. If you've got budget to medium price speakers, and I would say anything below £1,500, $2,000 is the medium speaker price range or below, you might not need Trinov. I think the MA1 system would be a great addition, but Arc will also do you a lot of favors. But if you have fantastic speakers, Trinov is gonna literally double the perceived sound value, sound price of your speakers. It just elevates, takes these PSIs honestly to a level you can't believe. So I am gushing about Trinov, but it is that good. Like I said, you're just gonna have to take my word for it if you haven't heard it. But fortunately, you have a YouTuber who has all of these systems and he can give you his feedback. So I hope you've got a lot out of it. Ask me if you haven't. Check out the Working Audio Tools podcast where myself and Paul Third constructively critique mixers and we talk about translation a lot in that podcast. I've been Ed Thorne. This is, it's been emotional. Mm -hmm.